Next, uh, we'll welcome our panelists. The panel uh, after winter comes spring? Question mark. This panel is chaired by Yasmin Akrimi. You heard it earlier today, and she will be joined by Ramiyes Sam, the singer of Tahi Square, an AR alumni, who was is one of uh, our first residents here in Helsinki. Hossam Fasula and uh, Ahmed. Ahmed Mohamed Kanfir, who is the director of Art Veda and Artist at Risk Partner in Tunis. Floor is yours, Yasmin. Hi guys, how are you? How was your day? We're fine. Good. A lot of things to discuss today. I um, um, I really want to start because I have so many ideas watching everything we we watch and, and listening to everything we listen to. I think the the, the you know, weight of memory as we talk 10 years after the people we lost and the things we lost and the things we want to want to keep alive uh, inside of us is very important. Uh, maybe we should start with that really, like um, memory, how how do we keep through art, uh, the memory of those who, who, who are gone and the thing that we lost alive really. Martha, do you want to start? I know you want to start. Um, <laughs> okay, it's fine. Um, no, I don't know. Maybe, maybe from my biography, it might help. Like uh, I was just thinking about it uh, today, early in the day. Uh, my the two generations that precede me in my family in Barcelona have all been subjected to to dictatorship, torture, war so on, so on, so on. So um, before going to, to Egypt, before like uh, going to experience the effects of dictatorship repression and so on, I had already some of these memories embodied in me. It's like uh, as long as we, um, so I mentioned that because I think it's very relevant to be equipped to deal with, with the immediate effects of repression, but also with the fact with this certitude that we live through that. Like, unless we, were, we get killed, we live through that. And uh, so, and the ways in which this memory is transmitted, they are domestic and they are tiny and they are, they don't, they are not written in capital letters, but we need to, and, and maybe in times of, uh, of, uh, of lockdown, in times of pandemic, in times of, uh, you know, like very harsh repressive uh, periods, such as in Egypt, it's important to pay attention to these mechanisms, like these daily life mechanisms that we transmit on how we have been through that, because, because otherwise we keep on repeating the cycle of frustration. Every, first we did it every year, then we did it every five years, now we are doing it every 10 years. And uh, the effect of the trauma of having experienced um, a revolutionary moment is so, 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 difficult to carry like it's such a burden that it may paralyze us and uh, and meanwhile we have survived these 10 years and we had survived many other years before so maybe like using memory in a strategic way like changing like changing a little bit the focus no like i have in mind what uh, laila soleiman is doing in her documentary theater like uh, she's uh, she's like she's putting the focus on previous moments of history that have uh, that provide tools to understand the nowadays situation when we are not allowed to speak out uh, openly about the current situation. So I don't know. Yeah, no, definitely. I think so. The situation in, in Tunisia and in Egypt are very different. That that we know, especially uh, from a perspective of, of freedom of expression. But there's that will to desacralize really and change history and uh, 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 really forget really and like you know put put apart completely the 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 um, the question of memory. Um, even as as uh, artists are still being. Uh, um, uh, you know, subjected to to torture, imprisonment. Today, I know uh, 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 Rami. Uh, there's Gamal Al Bahiri, uh, uh, and uh, and uh, I know there's a campaign uh, going on at the moment. I know I have been deeply traumatized by what happened to Shadi Habash. Uh, um, and, and this question of this ongoing memory really is at the heart of, of, um, 
of like you know the the, the history of of the Arab Spring ten years um, later. Yes, and thanks thanks for talking about for talking about Galal, and because I think you're muted. Yes. Yeah. He, now you can hear me. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Thanks for talking about Galal and Galal Bahiri is an Egyptian poet that um, he's a colleague and a friend and he is he's in jail now while he is civilian he was sentenced from a military court for three years because of his poetry book and um, we are campaigning on on the case with artists at risk from from day one and we have other organizations pushing with all ways possible but but still sometimes like. Um, it, we need to push more. We need to. We, we need. We need to. We need to do as as much as we can to to um, to release the guys. That that what I can say. And and Galal is still still in jail. Shadi Habash lost his life without doing anything in in jail. And Mustafa Gamal, that is also another human being that is still in jail because of the same case. And this is just one case in the Egyptian jails. And let's remember how bad conditions are the Egyptian jails at the moment. And um, I want to I wanna talk about what Marta was saying just fast, that um, the well-being and the mental health of, of any, any person that was taking part of, of any movement, it, it's very real and it's very important. And uh, I think that what happened to me and what happened to many of my friends and other people that were in the streets, that just easily you, you just get into your own zone and you, you suffer alone. But, but one of them, like best tools to really help myself and see other people like getting better was to to try to contact people that lived the same experience with you and try to just to talk and and have conversations it uh, it been it been extremely helpful um hussein do you want to add something on this yeah first um i i really feel emotional at this point and i did not expect that which is maybe it was like stupid of me, but these videos that, that we just watched together were very emotional to me. And I, I want to take this moment and kind of reflect on on the space that we're in right now, what we have right now, like this virtual place that uh, that we have. Rami is going to sing in a bit, 10 years after the revolution, kind of like almost same thing, like how it was. And I think that this this need for this place where we sit together and reflect it was like a major component of the Egyptian revolution. And and I think it still fascinates me to this day how Egyptians managed to, um, you know, create a place out of nothing, which is the Hay Square, where we all felt like we're at home, we know each other, we share the same dreams and ambitions. And I feel like one thing that is for sure is that this need is still within us and uh, autocratic regimes and dictatorships were never um, stable, they're, they're always fragile. And we're going to find our place again. And it's great that we, in, in this memory, uh, we have this feeling now that we're, we're still together and hopefully we're going to do it in a physical place. It reminds me when 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 you said um, um, creating a space out of nowhere, which is the the Tahrir Square, or in Tunisia, Habib uh, Bourguiba, or other other places. Uh, um, the first thing that the dictatorships uh, did to uh, take that momentum uh, uh, from us is really um, take that reappropriation of public places from us. They literally. Uh, um, limited the places where we can go and 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 shout and not just shout and and because because of anger but but uh, just be together and create a community. This is the the, the way they uh, uh, broke community down uh, uh, first by by taking them out and of course uh, through violence and and uh, imprisonment. Um, and it reminds me of of something that is happening right now in Tunis, uh, uh, which is really yesterday. I was I was in in, in uh, uh, the center of Tunis and and protests were going on and uh, all the the, the uh, roads leading to the main avenue were closed uh, and uh, the police presence was incredible um, Ahmed I'm, I'm sure you want to talk about that I know you were there um, I think you were there uh, do you want to talk about what you saw and and how that um, will to take uh, the, the the public spaces uh, out of people is is really going on ten years in Tunisia after you know um, uh, you know we are uh, after we normally are the only country that maintained a certain um, 
certain public public expression or like freedom of expression thing yeah the situation here is uh, unstoppable it's always moving and um, there is a um, we are waiting. We are waiting for the what's going on here and what will be uh, next. Uh, next these next few days. I, I I feel that I introduce myself like this. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about the situation. <laughs> Like Sorry about. <laughs> thank, I'd like to thank Ahmed one more time for producing this incredible, very high quality interview se series of interviews uh, in the last few days. And I think it's, it's it's we've been receiving updates on on the situation in Tunis. I, I think just if I may say one thing, uh, although we're not really part of this panel, Marit and I, uh, we wanted to be here to kind of we actually almost invited and tried to get the Belarusian to join us in this panel because it's happening right now. And he, he said, but without us even reading the program, said, well, you know, spring is coming. And so that we that somehow in the name of this chapter, you know, if, if, if after spring came winter, does, does spring come after winter again? And, and what we just heard from, uh, from uh, our friends from India, they are on the streets. But, but Rami, it's basically, you had something to No, I, I like, um, I, I, I wanted to say that maybe, maybe like, um, maybe, may, maybe today or tomorrow, or like um, nothing will happen in Egypt, like, like people would, would love to, 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 to have or to see. And uh, what, like, what could have been happening after 10 years for real if we were really on the right path from before but like like Hossam said like Ahmed like even Marita like all of you like the chance will always come back the only thing we can do is just to stay together and to be more and more prepared than than the last time that's that's the only thing and be, before Ahmed will talk about two and it's just one thing I, very important I'm, I'm so happy that Yasmin and Ahmed will talk about what's going to Tunis at the moment because like we said earlier, like um, there is this like fake picture in the in the Middle East, especially that that Tunis became like heaven after after the spring, and I know that this is not the case, and it, it's so important that you will talk about the reality and what's going on in the streets. Well, go ahead, please. Uh, okay, yeah, the, um, I tell you, the, the we are still in the police regime here. People are in the street, no caring about Corona just fighting the authority over abusing their the power. And for artists here, artists want to uh, work here is often influenced by the founder who most the time has political agenda and forces religious or ideological restriction. So it's not really the, the heaven here, but we are still working it. Exactly. Um, I want to I want to jump on what uh, what Rami said about uh, the 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 hope is always there, and I think uh, the more paranoid the regime is, as the Egyptian regime is very paranoid, very um, they are that paranoid because they know that at any time a revolution can happen again because it happened before, and the people are very aware of that. It happened before, so it could happen at any moment. So uh, the more oppressive they are the more for me, uh, it is actually ironically a good sign because that means they are very weak and very unstable and just waiting for a momentum to happen. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's for me.